Welcome to Lesson 5, Drawing Blouses. Today what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to take that basic t-shirt that we learned to do last week and turn it into something a little bit more complicated. So blouses are a little different than pull-on shirts in that very often they have some sort of a um, collar treatment like you see here. Um, they may have an overlap where instead of it just being uh, pull over the top, you're going to have one side is going to overlap the other side. And we'll talk about the difference between an illustration, which is what we see here, and a flat, which is what we see here. So to begin with, what we need to do is we need to get you some inspiration pictures. So your second homework assignment is to um, collect clear and large pictures of various types of blouses. And I asked for you to come up with 10 different blouses because you'll probably choose some that will be easier to draw than others and some that will appeal to you more than others. So look, try and find at least 10 different examples. So I pulled some off of um, Butterick and McCall's and I suggest you go to the pattern sites because that's where you'll get the clearest pictures. Now um, if you remember back to last week, this is an illustration where we have that has a little bit of pose. We might or might not be able to see all the details of the garment. These are flats of the same garment. This gives us a lot more information. And for this assignment this week, you are going to be drawing both a front and a back view of the flat and also a front and black back view of the illustration. Um, very often when you look at the uh, examples that are in the pattern books, you'll see different variations. Like you can see this one right here does not have sleeves, but they've added a little um, pleat on the little peplin on the bottom. This one has short sleeves, but you can see the basic silhouette is very, very similar. Um, so anyway, this is the kind of thing that you are going to collect for your homework. Now I'd like for you to collect pictures that have collars. Uh, we already know how to do a very basic neckline. Um, here you can see this is a unisex shirt. Um, here it is sleeveless. Here's the sleeveless version right here. You can see it's got a collar um, that folds back into a lapel. Button placement, it's got pockets. That would be a really good one to, um, to draw. And here's another one. Now one thing I wanted to point out about the pattern uh, flats as they're drawn, sometimes they're not drawn correctly. Can you see this one right here? They have neglected to put a back neckline on it. You can see here that you can see indeed the collar does have a neckline, but they have not put it on the back of the flat. And since there's no figure blocking the back of that neckline, when we draw a flat, of course we want to draw it. So that's something that you are going to have to provide. So for instance, here's a, um, an example of a collar drawn correctly. So this collar, which is very similar, is not drawn correctly. Correctly, This one is drawn correctly. So this is what you will do when you put it onto your drawing. So here's just a few more examples. Here we have a shirt photograph, which would, could be translated to an illustration. And then here we have a couple of variations of the, um, the shirt itself. You can do them in color, you can do them not in color. Now this is a great blouse, but it doesn't have a collar on it, so I wouldn't want you to draw that one. This would be a good one to draw. This is a boat neckline. If you look really carefully, it's got a little tiny collar on that boat neckline. And this is a, a really good example of why I want you to include the illustration picture so that I can know, they know that you've drawn it correctly. If you look at this illustration here, there is not a sleeve seam. It's just, it's all one piece. Now, I, if I didn't see this inspiration picture, I probably would mark it dock you a few points because I'd say, oh, you're missing your sleeve scene. But if you have the inspiration picture and you go, no, no, there is no um, sleeve scene, then I would know and you would get full credit for it. So let's start out um, talking about how to draw a blouse as a flat. Flats are a little easier than illustrations. They give us a lot of information and then it's much easier to draw the illustration once you have the flat kind of figured out. So when we draw a collar, I mean, when, yeah, when we draw a collar on a flat, we really have to locate how high up the collar goes on the neckline. Is it at the, the base of the, the neckline? Is it, which, this little neckline here we would call a jewel neckline. Is it above or is it below? And how does it lay on the, the croaky body? Also, is it symmetrical? Most collars are symmetrical. And again, when we get to drawing these on the computer, you'll really enjoy that because we only have to draw one half the collar and the computer will fill in um, the other half. So we always have to locate where the base of the collar is. We always have to figure out where the center front is. Now collars overlap. Let me zoom in a little bit here. 
you kind of see what I'm talking about. Let me go down here to these collars right here. And now our center front is right down here where the middle of the buttons are. If you have a, a button down shirt on right now, take a look at it and you'll see that the edge of the shirt actually extends over the center front. So our buttons go right down the middle, but the edge of the shirt, and you can see it here, is set off to the side. So our center front on this shirt is right down the middle right here. You can see this is offset. So we always have to locate where the center front is and the blouse overlap has to go over it. So that's something that we will talk about when we're doing our collars as a flat. So let's take a look at what we're going to draw. And let me put this over here. And I think it's a lot easier if you choose your, your, your blouse that you are going to draw and then you try and find a close-up of that blouse. So let me pick one out here that to draw. And let's draw, let's draw this one. This one looks pretty good. Let's see, this is the shirt that I want to draw. And what I'm going to do, I suggest that you go through your collar supplement. And a collar supplement, you've got it, it says collar supplement, it's in the back of your syllabus. And it's got all these different examples of different collars in it. Probably the collar, one that's similar to the one that you choose to draw, will be in this collar supplement. They're just really nice uh, close-ups, and for the most part, they're all drawn correctly, which is a great help, because not everything in the pattern books are drawn correctly. So let's pick out the one that looks similar to this. And I've gone ahead and picked it out, and I've blown it up so we can kind of get a closer look at it. So this is the collar that we are going to draw, and we are going to draw this shirt right here. It's got sleeves, it's got pockets, it's got an overlap, and um, it's got buttons, it's got everything we need. And I also wanted to show you how we're going to draw that collar as a flat. We'll draw it as an illustration a little later too. So what you're going to do is you need to get out your, your tracing paper and you need to get out your croquis. So open up your tracing paper pad like I'm doing here. And I've provided you with two kinds of croquis. This is a croquis we're going to use for our illustration, front and back. And this is the croquis that we're going to use for our flats, the front and back view. They're on a, uh, pages E13 and E14 in your, in your syllabus. So let's start off with the croquis that is for the flats. I'm going to take it and I'm going to slip it underneath my drawing paper here. Get down. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. And I'm going to draw the front first. Now, this is a great croquis, only it doesn't have a center front that looks like it's um, really located. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a center front. You can use anything that you want um, as a straight edge. I'm just going to go and locate it from about the center of her chin here to the center of her crotch. And I'm just going to lightly pencil in my center front, which is what I'm doing right here. So that's my center front. And I know that my, my shirt has to overlap that center front. So let's take a closer look. There's my collar. And the shirt that I am drawing looks like um, this right here. This is my shirt, and I'll come back to that. We're going to draw this one. But right now, I'm focused on the collar. So I'm going to put this collar nice and big in here. So what I'm going to do is I've got to, I've got to kind of analyze what I've got here. This is the part that sits at the base of the neck. So I'm going to draw that part in right here. There's the base of my neck. Now collars go up the neck. So the back of my collar is going to be somewhere up here, kind of underneath her chin. Now I want you to look at the slope of this collar here. Can you see how it breaks and then it turns and it changes direction right at the shoulder. So I'm going to bring this down and I am going to make it kind of follow the line of the neck right here and I'm going to stop it right before it gets to the shoulder. I'm going to do that on both sides like here. So I've got this part drawn first. I'm going to slip this under here so it doesn't keep moving around on me. Now, I've got to get the shape of the collar, and I've got to get how far it comes down. I also have to show where this overlap is. Now, remember I said that the overlap, this is my center front where the buttons are. So, right here is my center front, so my overlap is going to be about right here. So, I'm going to just pencil in the edge of my shirt, which is right there. 
and I got to kind of guesstimate how far down I think this collar is going. And I'm going to say it's not terribly low, it's not terribly high, it looks like it's about right here. Now collars cross each other. So let me draw this part right here to get this V. So I'm going to bring this here and it's going to go down, it's going to go down to where my overlap is. This side, of course my collar is symmetrical, is going to be exactly the same and it actually is going to go down the same distance, I didn't draw that quite right, Oh, that's a terrible eraser. Let me try this one. So I've got to kind of locate it. This is my underlap. It's going to come about right there. I'm trying to get as symmetrical as I can, and I'm going to draw that other part of my V right there. You see how they're kind of crossing each other like that? This is actually going over here. Can you see? So there's my collar that's underneath, and here's my collar that's on top, and I'll draw that. Now I have to kind of look at the shape of it. I'm going, okay, this is kind of coming out here like this, and then it is coming back to the tip here. Can you see that? This, located on that neckline there, is going to here, and this is going to here. Can you see I'm kind of crossing them like this? Now, to get this shape of the collar, kind of look at how it's joined in. It looks like this is pretty horizontal, so I'm going to come out like this, and then I'm just going to connect it up to where my the fall line is on my collar up here. So same thing, I'm going to bring it up here, I'm going to bring it up here, and there I go. So that's my, that's my collar kind of roughed out. Let me bring this tracing paper up a little bit. Does it? It looks almost like the collar that's on the right. So um, let's let's talk about the rest of it, and then we'll kind of clean this up. If I look at my shirt right here, I'll kind of fold this out of the way. If I look at my shirt which is right here. I've drawn a collar that's very similar and now I just have to kind of block in the rest of it. This is similar to what we did with the t-shirt and I can come here, I can get my shoulder seams, um, I look at the shape of my I look at the shape of my sleeve and I have to kind of determine how long that sleeve is. I'm going to say my sleeve is about right there and I'm just going to kind of follow the curve of my arm, draw my sleeve seam in, it looks like the pretty natural, um, pretty naturally is going to follow the curve of my little bathing suit that's on my croquis. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to try and imitate it. How am I going to get this the same length? If I look at it, I've got a little dotted line here, this is just under the dotted lines, I'm going to come straight across, there's the location for that part of the sleeve, bring this part of the sleeve straight across, there's the, my other sleeve, right there right like that. And so I've got two sleeves drawn and I've got to get my this this line, oh gosh, this one is a man, so the this overlap is on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and keep drawing this as it was drawn in the um the collar supplement and I'll have to do a little erasing. I'll take the croquis out of there in just a minute. Let me get this blocked in. So I'm going to come here. Look at the length of it, which is about like that and I'll curve this a little bit down here and that looks pretty well blocked out. So let me take this croquis out from underneath it and I think you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So here's my here's my little shirt all blocked in. Here's my close-up of my collar and now I just have to clean it up a little bit and then I'm going to double check it for accuracy. So if I'm looking at this one, which is the one that I'm going by, I can't see the underneath part of this um, lapel. So I'm going to erase that and I'm going to erase this part right in here. But now I know it's accurate. The reason I drew it crossed is because sometimes it's really hard to get that point. Now I know that there's nothing right in here, right? And I know that this line is not going to go up past my collar because that's where it's turning back on itself. Now another really important thing that we have to show, this is where the collar is, sh is sewn to the shirt. So I have to have this line here, which I do. Also, can you see this tiny little hook right here? That tiny little hook 
shows that makes the color look like it is folded. And we'll draw that both on the computer. It just gives a little bit of, of um, depth to it. And um, this is the back of the shirt. Now if I look at my shirt again, it looks like I've got a little top stitching. My buttons are going to go, whether it's a man's shirt or a women's, sh women's shirt, my buttons are going to go right down here, down the center front line. So I would put my buttons, see, right here. Like that. And I've got a little top stitching, doot, 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 little top stitching, etc. Now I want to check this and see if it's accurate. And I'm going to check it just like I did the flats. I'm just going to fold it right down the middle. We'll see how I did. Probably going to be off a little bit, and I'll make a few little corrections. Oh, it's pretty close. So there's my center. You can see that right where my buttons are is right down that center front. I get, if you can see through, it looks like it's pretty darn close. It looks like this might be off just a little bit. And let's see, I drew on, yeah, I drew on this side. So what I can do is I can take, and I'm just going to erase this just a little bit and make it match the lapel that's underneath. So both of my, the sides of my collar are exactly the same. This looks pretty good. This looks pretty good. I'll erase it down here. And I think my shirt looks pretty accurate. So that's my, my shirt front. All right, that's my, now what I'll do is I'll trace that in ink and I'll get a really nice clean copy of it. Now to draw the back side of it, I'm going to use the back croquis, which is this one right here. Take off all these little chicken scratches. And here's my back. And again, there's a couple different ways I can do this. Just like we do it on the computer, I can take and I can flip this like this. Now I can put this over the back of my croquis. This is the front, of course, but this is a fresh, let me go this way. This, this part of the tissue is going to become my back. So I'm going to put my front over the back of my croquis. I'm going to fold the new tissue over it, and I'm going to get it exactly the same silhouette. So now I know my sleeve length will be the same. There's my sleeve. There's my sleeve right here. And now the collar is really what's going to be different. So I'm going to bring my collar up, and here's my collar. And then it's going to come down like this into my shoulders. And really all that's going to show on the back of my collar is where it's folded over. So that's what my, the back view of my collar is going to look like. The rest of the shirt is going to be almost identical to the front. If I've got a little top stitching here, a little top stitching here, maybe a little top stitching on the bottom. Of course, I'm doing this very quickly. Yours will be a lot neater. But now I've just drawn the back of my blouse. Here's the back, and here's the front. And hopefully you can see that they're the same silhouette, same length sleeve, everything's the same. Only now what we're viewing from the back is this collar right here. And basically we're viewing where, where the collar, right in here, this is the part that I just drew. Of course, there's no buttons because the buttons are on the front. Then, of course, what you're going to do when you're ready to finish this, once you feel that it's accurate, you'll put a fresh piece of tracing paper over it, and you will draw it in ink. So let's talk about getting this inked so that it is nice and clean and, and finalized. We have kind of a roughed out pencil drawing now, and now we want to make it look really good. So what I suggest doing is taking your... your tracing paper out of the tablet and I'm going to tape it right down up here. Let me show you what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm taping it to a piece of white paper so I can see what I'm doing really easily. Can you see how I've taped that down? Then I'm going to take my fresh piece of tracing paper and I am going to tape it on top of my drawing. And that way I can turn my drawing and get a really good angle on it as I'm, as I'm drawing it. So I'm going to start off with my number um, 5 pen, which is my heavier pen. Where did it go? Here it is. And I'm going to kind of try and analyze. I'm going to do my collar first. So I'm going to look at my collar. Now I do better if I can kind of angle it a little bit. And since I have it taped together, things shouldn't shift around too much. So if I'm looking at this, I've got my, my collar. I'm going to draw the top of my collar there. I'm going to bring it down the shoulders, like you can see here. Let me turn it a little bit. 
bring it down the shoulders just to the sh to the just to the shoulder line. I know that went off the camera. So this is what I have so far. And now I'm going to bring it down like this. I, first of all, I'm going to draw my little hook right here. There's my hook, and I'm going to draw it all the way over here. Here's my little hook. I'm going to draw it, and it's just going to end right there. Where this collar ends, it's going to come straight down like this. Here's my collar lapel as it's folding back. Here's my other collar lapel as it's folding back. It has to go all the way to where the overlap is. I come here. There's my collar, upper part of my collar, and this is where it blends in right there. And that looks pretty symmetrical. That looks pretty good. So I've got to draw my little line where it's attached to my shirt, where my collar is attached to my shirt. Put in my shoulder seams like this. I'm going to get my sleeve in there as smoothly as I can. I'm going to curve it just a little bit. Do my other sleeve over here. Try and keep it as symmetrical as I can. Curve it a little bit. Here's my sides of my blouse. I'm going to curve the bottom of my blouse just a little bit. Um, now I'm going to go in with my smaller pen and I'm going to draw some of the details in there. So I'm going to draw a little bit of top stitching right down here and a little top stitching right down here. I'm going to try and get my buttons as round as I can. When we draw them on the computer, you'll find out, gosh, you can get those buttons all exactly the same size and get them spaced exactly. But you can see my button placement is right down my center seam. Now sometimes what they'll do with a button is they'll put a little tiny line underneath it to show that there's a button hole underneath it. Put a little line right there like that. And maybe I've got a little top stitching down here. Get as even as I can. And that looks pretty good. Now if I go back to my original shirt that I was drawing, if you remember this picture right here, it's got a few little pockets on it. Now this also, see this line back here? It's because this back yoke line which is right here, is showing behind. So if I wanted to show that, I could. I could show that this indeed has a back yoke line, but if I have that back yoke line there with a few little gathers like that, when I draw my back view, I am going to have to show this back yoke right here. So let's use this as an inspiration. Let's finish this up. So I'm going to go back to my number one pen, or my number five, excuse me. Here's my shoulders. Here's my sleeve. Curve it a little bit. Other sleeve. Curve it a little bit. We know the length is exactly the same because we transferred it from the front view. Now my collar, you can see here, see you don't see much of the collar from the back view. We just know how high up we drew it. So I'm going to go ahead and take that. It's going to be exactly the same. There's my collar. And there it is there. So since I drew my little yoke line there, I'm feeling like I've got to draw it on my back, which I do. And it's just a, a simple straight line. I'm going to go straight across like that. And it's got a little bit of a tuck there. It's got a little bit of fullness. And that's all I'm going to draw. So there's my back view. So let me uh, bring this over so you can see both the front and the back view. And that is a front and back view of a shirt collar with a fold back lapel that's drawn correctly. Now, what's not drawn correctly is I've got a few missing details over here. If I've got top stitching on the hem in the front, I have to have top stitching on the hem on the back. Same thing with the sleeve. I've got to bring that top stitching all the way around the entire shirt. If I wanted to, I could do a little bit of top stitching across the yoke right here. And I think I'm done. So that is how you draw a flat um, of a blouse with short sleeves. If I were to draw the same thing with long sleeves, if you see here, I would just extend those sleeves down. Now if you've got a cuff, one of the things you have to pay attention to is see how this sleeve is blousing out a little bit? This cuff will be pretty close to the croquis, the, the, um, the, the, the 
contours of the croquis, and then this is going to blouse out just a little bit. The cuff has got a straight line on it to show that it's uh, where the uh, cuff is coming around, where the, it overlaps. Of course, we've got our buttons if it's got a button cuff. This particular pattern has a seam on the cuff, which is what this additional line is. Some sleeves have that seam, some sleeves don't. If we look at the front view of the long sleeve view, we can see here that um, th there is no seam on the front. They just have an additional seam, and there's probably an underarm seam right in here. All right, so that is our flat. Um, how to draw a flat, and this is what yours will look like. So now the next step is to take your flat and to draw an illustration of it, which I'll show in just a second. So let's talk about how we can take our original flat that we just drew, which looks like this, and let's see, and let's put it on an illustration and draw it with a little bit of drape and make it a little bit more interesting. So the croquis that I provided for you to draw your illustration on, and you are going to do a front view and a back view, looks like this. It's on page E13. And all we're going to do is we're going to take the details of this blouse and we are going to transform um, form it to an illustration. Now an illustration is a little bit more curvy, it's got a little bit more drape, and there's a few things that are in the way, like a neck, because we're going to leave the croquis in the illustration, because we have to show how it fits. So let's talk about how we're going to do that. Let's, let's do the, um, let's, let's block out the collar first, because that's the most difficult part of it. So here's my center front. This is actually where my buttons are going to go, and so I'm just going to sketch in to the side of it. This is the edge of my blouse right here because the edge of my blouse is on the opposite it's, it's to offset from center front. Now I'm going to kind of guesstimate where this um, blouse is going to cross and it's going to cross I'm going to say about right here. So what I've located on my croquis is center front right here right there and so I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to curve it up around her neck like this I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the same thing. Now, if you notice, it's not perfectly symmetrical. See how this is this is a little bit shorter on this side and longer on this side? Now, I've got to figure out how far up my neck is going to go. And my neck is going to go, I'm going to just guesstimate it, about right here. This is the part of the, the collar that's on the inside. Now, how am I going to get that collar to look like this and get it to look like it's wrapping around her neck? Well, what I have to do is I have to lay it on her neck. So right here, I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to lay this. I'm going to see this line of her neck. I'm going to follow the line of that neck to get the line of where this collar it stops. And I'm going to stop it just about where this line is here. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to bring it out. I'm going to lay it so it's on her neck. And I'm going to bring it just about to this line. So I've got a couple of reference points here. Just kind of block it out, and then we'll make this look right. All right, so there's the, our collar, and that's how far out it's going. We know that it's going to end here. So I also know I've got this part of my lapel, which is going this way. And I'm going to draw it on both sides, like I did the flat. I can't fold this one. Can you see how I've crossed it, though? I can't fold it because she's not perfectly symmetrical. Um, and then I'm going to come over here. This member came out pretty much horizontally, and I'm going to bring it up to where it fell on the shoulder. This one I'm going to bring it out horizontally and then I am going to bring it where it falls on the shoulder, right there. I didn't draw that quite right. Let me see here. If you look at this, this is drawn like this, yes? This goes into, see that little space is right in there, that goes into there. So this one isn't drawn correctly either. You've got to really re analyze what your drawing looks like. So this is a complete like triangle, and then this goes about halfway into it. All right, so that's really our, our um, color kind of blocked out. Now let's, let me zoom in a little bit here. Come on. Get it to zoom. No, that wants to go out. Come on. Doesn't want to go. Come on. There we go. So let's look at this a little bit closer. I've got my collar kind of blocked out here, and it's pretty similar to this. I've got. I'm going to put my shoulder seams in here. 
I'm going to get this croaky out of here as soon as possible so that you can kind of see how uh, see my blouse a little bit easier. And you can tell she's got little tiny skinny little arms. And I'm not going to make my um, my blouse that skinny. I'm going to bring my sleeve down here, kind of, and I'm going to bring it up. See, I'm going to bring it to the armhole. See how much bigger I've made that than her skinny little arm. I'm also going to take this, and I'm not going to make it skin tight. This this it's. it's not that fitted. I don't see any darts and I don't see anything that's making it really tight. I'm going to bring it down here over her hips. Now I'm going to bring this one over her bust line and then it's going to go at her hips and I will follow the contour of this line right here. Now our other arm here, I'm missing a little bit of information. It's at a different angle so I've got to kind of guesstimate it to get it the same length. I'm going to come here. It's going to have to have a sleeve seam. So I've got to mark the seam right here, and it's going to go over her bust line. So let me take her, oh, and let me just sketch in her body here, her skinny little arms. Because on an illustration, if you remember, we have to show the person underneath it. Otherwise, it's not an illustration. Croaky, we don't show the, the person. And put her neck in there. Right there. And I'll just kind of sketch in her face like this. Give her a little mm, little hairdo. Make her face very, very simple. I'll give her a little lips. And just a little bit of an eye. Eyebrow and I'm done. So I'm gonna keep her very, very, very simple. So let me take this out so that you can see what I've drawn. And I've got the beginnings of an illustration. And when I say the beginnings, because I'm going to have to ink it and I'm going to have to finish it. So let's talk about finishing it. So we know that, let me put this back over here so you can see what we're drawing. Here's our little shirt. Let me move it that way. And I've got to figure, what I, figure out what I'm doing here. Now, it's buttoning this way. See, this is on top. So I'm going to bring this here, and I have to erase this part right here. So there's my little fold back on my lapel. This lapel is disappearing underneath. You can see that a little bit better now. Now my center front was right here, so I can put my buttons in there. And I've got one, two, three, four buttons. I want to get the same amount of buttons that I have on my flat. Now let's talk a little bit about this neckline. It looks a little loose on her because she's not a very big person. When I blocked it out, it looks kind of thin, doesn't it? So I'm going to give it a little bit more substance. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take this line and I'm going to bring it up here and make that little hook right there. So here's the back of the collar. Can you see how I did that? And now I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to bring this line in just a little bit. And here's my collar laying on her neckline. Here, this is actually her neck. See, she's a big old, she's got a skinny little neck. But we can see how the collar is laying on there. And that's about it. Oh, and I would, I would put my top stitching on there like this. I have to have all the details have to match. If I've got top stitching on the flat, I need top stitching on the illustration. Don't forget on your illustration to put the head in. It's got to have the body because I the uh, you don't want little ghost people. So your body with your arms, your legs, your neck, your head, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, whatever part. Now we don't have to do the, the legs because we're only interested in the blouse in this particular drawing. Um, then I would take and I would ink it exactly the same way that I inked the flat. So you've got an inked drawing. Now we've got to figure out how to draw the back view of this. So let's do the back view of the croquis which is right here. And let me slide this underneath here. Hmm, how am I going to do this? I'll do it this way. There we go. Everything on the screen. And now what I need to do is I need to draw this back view on the back view croquis. And she's got a little bit of a pose, so let's talk about how we might do that. Now her hair is kind of hiding a little bit, so we're not going to be able to show everything. But let me block in her face so we can see where her body is. Here's her neck right here. Now this collar is sticking up a little bit. It's not down here. So the collar actually is coming up the back of her neck and it's going to stop right there. And the back of the collar, this line right here, is curving down here. 
That's really all we're going to see of that. Now, in regards to her shoulder seams, I'm going to come out here. We really can only really well see this one sleeve. This particular croquis has a little bit more meat on her bone. She's not quite as skinny as the other one. We can't really see much of the front, so I'm just going to curve it off the bust line. I'm not going to make it skin tight. I'm going to loosen it a little bit. It's going to go, because it's an illustration, it's going to go behind her arm. Now, I always make it a continuous line and erase it. Here's the length of it. It's going to curve over her butt. This part, here's my sleeve seen over here. There's my back. Again, she's kind of more buxom looking. Curve it over her butt. I'm going to put her arm in like this. Here's her other arm. Now I can erase this line here as her arm's covering up her blouse. Now remember at the last minute I put this little yoke in. I've got to look at my, my lines here. Looks like that yoke is going to go right across her back just about like that. And um, let me take her out of there and let's see what we've got here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So she's got just about everything we need. Um, again, once you kind of take that croquis out, you can see it a little bit better. It's easy to uh, clean up your lines. And then, of course, you're going to trace it in the black ink like this. Yours will be a little neater than mine. All right, so we've got that. That's all we can see of her collar. And actually, I'm going to draw that collar down like that a little bit. As it does kind of curve around, remember? This part here is going to curve around. And then we can't see this part of the collar. Oops. We can't see on the front. We can't see this part of the collar. So when we draw it, all we can see is what we see on the back, which is this amount right here. Her shoulder is pretty much hiding everything. Put a little top stitching on the top of that, because that's what I have on the flat. Little top stitching on her. Oh, and I forgot her other sleeve over here. So we've got to put her sleeve on this side, curve it a little bit, a little bit of top stitching, and I'm good to go. Whoops! Off the, hard for me to see that camera. So here is her, the other sleeve that I just sketched in. I'm going to come out this way. There's the sleeve seam. Be sure you show how your sleeve is connected to your garment. And of course, this is closer, so that's why this sleeve looks bigger. I took that line out so that her um, blouse is not going across her arm, and this one is now ready to be inked. There's her little. Okay, so that's a pretty good example of a short sleeve blouse, front and back. Now you're going to do three of these three different flats, front and back, and three illustrations using the same blouses, front and back view. Now let's talk about how we're going to grade this and what you need to be sure and include for me so that you get full credit. So what you're going to be drawing is you are going to be drawing three flats, three front views, and three back views. And you are going to be drawing three illustrations, three front views and three back views of the same blouse. So essentially, you'll have three of like this. You'll have your illustration on the illustration croquis, but you'll have a front and back view, and then you'll have a front and back view of your the same blouse as a flat. So this is how I have the um, points broken down. I'm going to be looking for a, a collar. I'm going to look at your sleeves, and you are going to be graded on your line qualities. So it's really important that you ink everything in. When I look at the illustration, uh, I'm going to be looking at the garment follows the contour of the croquis, that it's draping correctly. Um, and look at your collar, look at your sleeves, and also I'm going to look at your accuracy. Are your buttons down the middle, for instance, you know, is your center front in the middle? So this particular assignment is worth a total of 60 points. And you will you can turn that in either manually, um, give me get to me a hard copy by the 10 o'clock on the day it's due, or you can put it in the drop box and I will grade it there. You'll take a picture of it with your phone or your camera or scan it and be sure that you put your name on it and there's an online grading sheet that I will fill in online. So that's it for Lesson 5 and if you have any questions send me a quick email and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks. Bye-bye.